I've nothing to say. You have many things. Well, nothing that's not been said. Said by you. Dear I do George. not know where to go. Not at all. I want to make things that count, things that I will be what I had to do. What am I to do? Move on. Stop worrying where you're going. Move on. Welcome to the Not So Kosher Show. I am Bexy, and I had a wonderful interview with Wendy Kaut. She is going to be joining us in the Twin Cities very soon as she has one of her big plays opening up here in the Twin Cities. Uh, I appreciate you listening to this show. You can check out Not So Kosher at Not So Kosher dot com, not so kosher dot net, backroom studios dot com and dot net, s t e w d i o s. You can check us out on Instagram at not so kosher tc and on Twitter at not so kosher. Uh, and you know, I do my best to plaster all my shit all over Facebook. So um, make sure that you guys get your tickets for the big play that Wendy Kaut has got coming into town at the Minnesota Jewish Theater Company in beautiful Highland Park, St. Paul. It's located at the Community Center, the Highland Library, if any of you know, sitting up on the hill across the street from Dairy Queen on Ford Parkway. So I gave her a little, I gave, so Wendy and I had a little Skype call. So we got to at least see each other, which was pretty sweet. And she is darling and she has done some amazing things in this world. She's got a a vast array of, of credits. She's done stage work, which is her newest thing. She's, she's writing these plays. She's done film and TV Um, She serves on the board of directors of the Skylight Theater Company in Los Angeles and has co-produced fundraisers for the nation, People for the American Way, National Women's Law Center, and Acid Survivors Trust International. Um, She bases herself out of Santa Barbara, but she's really been all over the world. She's really lucky to have an amazing husband. Uh, She one of the last things that she had that went on here in the Twin Cities was for the Twin City uh, Jewish Film Festival a couple years ago. She had a film that debuted uh, Dwarfman in Love. Uh, I unfortunately have not seen this yet, but I need to get my ass in gear and go and get that film or, um, you know, maybe, you know, pick it up on uh, VHS, you think? I'm not, I don't know if I can do that. That probably won't even happen. It probably isn't even in VHS, or so maybe a CD. Oh, but better yet, maybe on Netflix, maybe on something on the Internet. Um, she, she won Best Feature at the Hollywood International Film Festival, the Mirabella International Film Festival in Spain, um, a, a bunch of other different areas, Best Comedy in Los Angeles. Uh, for that film festival, this, this movie – won a ton of stuff. Um, the, so many, I, I literally can't even list it. It was, it was shown in many, many, many cities um, for its big debut a few years ago. Wendy also created and was the executive producer of the cult ABC show, Anything But Love, that uh, was that starred Jamie Lee Curtis and Richard Lewis. Um, she also wrote and developed projects uh, for Paul Reiser, Jane Fonda, Robin Williams, uh, she also, as I mentioned in the interview, uh, had a big thing to do with Rob, with Mork and Mindy. Uh, did a lot of writing with that. She's she's also created a lot of things for ABC, CBS, NBC, and Lifetime. Uh, she served on boards of the Liberty Hill Foundation and Fund for Santa Barbara and served on the Social Justice Award panel for the Santa Barbara Film Festival. Her credits are just unbelievable, but she has this wonderful 
big world premiere debut of this comedy, We Are the Levinsons, is going to be April 22nd through May 14th of 2017. And she has a cast of amazing people from the Twin Cities, um, an amazing director. She then took a break, went back home while they continued their rehearsals. And she is coming back to enjoy the first few weeks of this play. Actually, she could be here the entire time, I think. You know, it's probably because she loves being in Minnesota because it's a beautiful place to be. But you can check out the performances. Again, they're running April 22nd through May 14th, 2017 at the Highland Park Community Center Theater. And you can look that up at mnjewishtheater, S-T-E-A-T-R-E dot org. Um, And they have so many other plays that they do that are just amazing. You can also give them a call at 651-647-4315. You can email them at info at mnjewishtheater.org. The Highland Park Community Center Theater is at 1978 Ford Parkway in St. Paul. Of course, lovely Highland Park. Now, when you listen to this interview, you have to make sure to not pay attention to the gardener that Wendy had in her backyard. Very much doing busy work and making some very strange noises. So please enjoy the interview and please make sure you get your tickets for this play. I want to see every single fucking seat sold for her because her work deserves that. Thank you. Yes. Wendy Cow, thank you so much today for joining me on Not So Kosher. Um, you live in San- Santa Barbara? Pretty much, yes. I and mean, you have house yes, space in there. Okay, uh, we are based here, but we travel as often as possible. Okay, because you—it sounds like you pretty much are a major like country surfer. You really like to hit the the country yeah. up a lot, right? Yes, we do. We do. I mean, it's it's part of just refilling the well. You know, we're both writers. My husband and I are both writers, and. And then you travel and you learn and you grow and you meet people from different cultures and you find out what we all have in common and what we don't. Yeah. So it's it's very enriching personally and as writers, it's very helpful. Cool. Yeah, I suppose it helps your mind to expand more when we're just kind of instead of isolated in one spot, kind of yes. helps us dream but, but a little you more. Can still, you can still see the universe in one spot. That's I mean, true. Thoreau did that with Walden, right? Yeah. Everything is the universe. So That's so true. Uh, Where's your birthplace? Where is your birthplace? Chicago. Okay. Did you grow up there? No, I didn't. Uh, We were kind of the wandering Jews of our family. And uh, I've lived in my childhood, I guess, oh boy, we moved around quite often. I think I went to seven different schools before high school. Wow. But we lived in in Chicago. We lived in Michigan, Wisconsin, Florida, finally settled in the Bay Area of California in middle school, where I had my first experience with anti-Semitism. Oh. That's not good. Yeah. No. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Very um, interesting. You are having your world premiere of your next play, We Are the Levinsons. It's going to be at the Minnesota Jewish Theater Company in St. Paul. St. Paul's beautiful Highland Park, which where I am located and born and raised and never left. Um, that is opening April 22nd, 2017, and it's running through May 14th of this year. Um, you are you are a Jackie of all trades. You are a screenwriter, you're a writer, executive producer, play writer, and even a writer for Mork and Mindy. I have to throw this in, that in because that's of my era, you know, um, with many, many, many more credits under your thong. Um, I welcome you. And I want to know, one of my first biggest questions would be, how's Passover going for you? Everything's going well. It happens to be one of my favorite holidays. I love the themes of Freedom and freedom from what? You know, as contemporary people, who are our pharaohs? Are they internal? Are they external? Um, I just love this holiday. And it also, it's bittersweet because I, I miss my parents very much. Yeah, I'm sorry. That, I can't imagine that. What is that? Oh my gosh, it's my gardener. Oh, <laughs> I'm so sorry. Okay. So one of the Mark Maron, no, it's no big deal. 
One of the it's Mark, okay. it's fine. One of the Mark Marin shows I was listening to recently, he was interviewing some big star, and his gardener started doing the lawn work, and he's like, "Oh shit," you know, and you can hear it, and it's good. It adds it adds character to it. Yeah, <laughs> no, we can't. Um, so my my from reading about you, and may I say. I so enjoyed reading about you. I so enjoyed learning about you. I can't wait to actually hug you. You're, you seem oh, like a extremely Hamish woman. I love that. Um, and you have survived in this industry for over 30 years. Now, I don't know right. what the fuck that's about because personally, I thought you were like 29. But what, <laughs> what, do you think, what do you think about your writing that has kept you swimming in this industry? Well, you know, I think it's... It's, I've been first of all I was very fortunate to have the family I had which instilled a very s- strong sense of myself and my voice hello Gardner thank you thank you it's blowing in the wind here Baxi it's blowing in the wind <laughs> um, so I think that part of one's strength can come from different places and I always attribute that began with my family, which um, instilled in me that strong voice uh, and that and that confidence that I was here to do something. So no matter what the world brings, I just do what I'm here to do. And I'm not so invested in um, what the world is thinking about me as much as how I'm thinking about myself and, and honoring what gifts I've been given. So there's, a, there's just kind of a way to go through life where it's like, we're all going to have shit happen. We can't control it. You're going to have highs and lows personally and professionally. Just for me, it's just, okay, put on the, the seatbelt, you know, get out the popcorn and enjoy the ride. Um, and I have had, I've had both. I mean, I've had wonderful gifts bestowed and blessings and lots of affirmations at my work. And then I've had, you know, lots of frustration. I've, I've killed a lot of trees, Bexy. There's scripts that I've... <laughs> the paper! The when there paper was paper I before did. computers, right? <laughs> now we have the computer, but long before that I was writing. So, um, I guess that's how I survive. I just know that um, I'm here to do certain work, and I do it. And wherever it lands, it lands. And so this moment coming up is an extraordinary gift from Barbara Brooks and the, you know, the, the Minnesota Jewish theater company. It's, it's always a courageous thing to produce a new work. You know, everybody wants to see Fiddler for the 900th time, you know, or, or any of any of our great Jewish playwrights work um, that have had great successes, but getting something new up, getting people's tushes in those seats it's a lot harder yes. and uh, we do need and I, I'm so thrilled with the support I'm feeling from St. Paul and Minneapolis for this beautiful theater that's been with us for two decades and she's extraordinary Barbara she's what she does there that's really cool it's true it, it's amazing that it still has survived and uh, you know hopefully I would love to see all your seats full I mean that would be a wonderful thing and I'm going to do my best (laughs) to help I am you've created uh, many TV shows or helped on many TV shows and you've worked some worked with a a lot of really famous people how has that felt for you do they just seem normal when you're just working with them do they listen to you or do they tell you what to do well you know every medium is different um and 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 so that's probably why i was drawn to work in different places like film television theater prose uh because everything's different and every experience is different i mean certain i I had the great honor and joy of working with Elliot Gould, who has, from the first time I saw him, which I think might have been Bob Ted Carroll and Alice's brilliant performance in that film, I was just in love with him. He was a, one of our first anti-heroes, on, uh, Jewish anti-heroes in the film world. And you couldn't have a more beautiful mensch of, a, of an artist and person uh, in your life. I've, I've worked with people who I can say that's true, of, and I won't name them. That's good. <laughs> but but um, 
I've certainly had that as well. And really, when I've looked very closely at what that other behavior's been, you can't even take it personally, Bexie, because whatever that person's doing, if somebody's a bitch, if somebody's acting um, snobby, it's really not even about anybody but themselves. I mean, how are they feeling about themselves? Why did they get put together in that broken, humpty dumpty way? Yeah. You know, so yeah. uh, try to go. I try to go through with um, empathy and, uh, and and understanding. And and for me as a writer, everybody's a character. So good, right? <laughs> so I'm I'm always kind of I'm living life, but I'm also observing life yeah. at the same time. Um, but it, you know, part of what this brings me to is how thrilling it is to work at. at for, for theater, because as a writer, it's the place where we're most respected. And this process with, with, um, with this theater has been so beautiful with our director and our cast and the level of respect uh, in, of, of our ideas and being open and sharing and creative. This doesn't happen all the time in all the other mediums. I mean, you go to movies, you see that there's five writers listed in a credit. Well, that's because they've all been replaced. And who knows where that original vision was. But in the theater, the vision begins and ends with the playwright. Cool. So it's really an act of health to be here. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> to, to be in a place where I'm no longer replaced or having to fight so hard and really work with dedicated artists who are in it for the passion and dedication of the work and not for some ego or a bigger car or whatever bangle bead uh, bling they want to wear. I mean, that was very wonderful about arriving in the Twin Cities because in Los Angeles, which isn't far away, everyone who waits on you in a restaurant is usually an actor. And they're waiting, you know, they're waiting for their break in television, in film, possibly even in the music industry. But in the Twin Cities, these are people who are waiting for their stage break, the next stage gig. And it's a different feeling. And it's it's quite, it's a quite happy place for me. Good. I'm so glad. Can you tell me who are the Levinsons? Do you know them? <laughs> <laughs> well, sure. I know pieces of them from lots. They're a composite of many people I've known. And um, the inspiration for them is uh, my parents. Lil and Lenny are come from my love and um, understanding of my parents. It's not memoir. I haven't written a memoir piece. This isn't me this play, but it is certainly draws from people I've known, people I love, uh, and experiences I've had. Uh, and I have, you know, I spent the last, um, chapter of my parents' life with them as they went through their debilitating diseases. And, and so that's part of what's informing this is, okay, let's, let's talk about that. Let's, let's get that out there. And so it, it's a little bit of everything, you know. And, and without giving it too much of a canahora, you I know some of it is like, didn't your father say, oh, this will be a good p- part if you ever write about this? or Which oh, I thought was yeah. so cute. I oh, thought that was really cute. Yeah. So I, this play is kind of a little bit about about your life and or parts it has, of it. It has a little bit of it in there, I, it, but it's not me i mean there's a there's a character of rosie who's uh the daughter and and she has aspects of who i am but she's not me and the father and the mother in the piece have aspects of my parents but it's not my parents um but but you know you you have these experiences in life that um you feel and you observe and you you just need to write about them and this was one of them i I had to write about this time that I went through with my parents and figure out a way to do that in which it was um, really honored what that process was. And, and, and our process as a family was always laughter first. Oh, totally agree with that. I mean, that's what makes the world go around right, if people would just get that, right? <laughs> I agree. Uh, so I'm kind of curious if you, being that you don't live here, 
And you have this play and they're doing the rehearsals, but they don't have the person that wrote the play with them. How does that? They did. No, 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 they oh, did. They did. I was there. I oh, was you were there. there enough that I they was, don't change? I was. Okay. See, and I wasn't sure. I knew you had been here, but I wasn't sure if you were here enough where, I mean, do they try to fuck with it later on when you leave? Like, do Or is that kind of like a given you don't do that? Here's how it works. I was invited to come for the first week of rehearsals, and it was perfect. Uh, it was a way to, to bond with the cast, the crew, everyone, so that we could all get on the literal and figurative same page. Um, And I can tell you that from the very first reading of the script, when I met the actors, my whole body relaxed because they were already a family. They looked like a family, they connected like a family, And the rest, I I so trust our director, Kurt, uh, to take them wherever else they needed to go. But but I left to leave them to their process. But through that time, uh, the director and our stage manager would contact me by email if the actors needed something, a question answered. If they needed, if, if words of mine weren't working well, um, my job is to, uh, is to is to get the script as authentic and as uh, as it can be. And I happen to be a writer who's very open to who, to the creative process and collaboration. Not everybody is. Not everybody is. I I don't feel that my words are written in stone. Cool. I feel like my words are like a lava lamp. They're always moving. And where, wherever the pattern is and whatever, I want to honor that. So through the, the past few weeks, um, we've just little tweaks here and there. And I, I also feel, you know, when you write something, it's a very different animal than when it's performed. Because when you write it, sometimes you, have, you find yourself talking about things when they when they're performed they're just enacted so i i look for where i can take my words away and let the actors behave as opposed to me telling you the audience what you're seeing you don't need to be told what you're saying you're seeing it yeah and and i think it gets in the way of your authentic experience to just sit back and feel like you're a fly on the wall in the Levinson's condo. And I don't want you to think of the writer. I don't want you to think of these words. Somebody wrote these words. I just want you to feel like, oh my gosh, I'm in their living room with them. That's my job. I love that. I can't wait for that. I I've, always, I, I've always wanted to live in a condo. <laughs> <laughs> well, you will for 90 minutes. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So one last question is what's your favorite thing to do when there's maybe nothing for you to do? Do you have like, are you a reader um, or do you knit or art? Well, or? There's, there's two different answers to that. One is that, what I really love to do is just hang out with Dennis, my darling. And, and it doesn't have to be a plan. We can take a walk. We can, we can sit down and watch uh, television, a movie. We can make a meal. I, I just enjoy being with him I, as, as well as quite a few. I'm really blessed with a lot of people in my life that I feel that way about is that how lucky we are to have our friends our family. Um, when I'm alone, uh, yes, I, I love reading. I don't, uh, I need to read more. I, I, reading for me is, is, is just, it's like going, it's like traveling, but I don't have to leave the bed. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> you know, you just, you lie there and you and, and a good book will take you to, to another destination and, uh, uh and, and give you another adventure. So, yeah, I would say reading. Love to eat. Love to eat. Real happy in the Twin Cities. Yay! Real happy. <laughs> <laughs> we definitely have a lot of really good restaurants, don't we? It's like oh yeah. We can every night we could go someplace different or every lunch. I mean, like it's pretty interesting. I mean, I feel that way because I live here, but then I hear a lot of people say that too. That 
so oh, pretty no. I'm, I was only there for five days. I cannot wait to be back for three weeks. Oh, good. Oh, three weeks. Oh, my God. Yes, <laughs> is Dennis coming with? Section. You, oh, there you go. Perfect. <laughs> is, is Dennis good to come with you? Yes. Oh, yes. Good. Dennis is coming. Good. And He's, as are, I have to say, I have unbelievable family and friends who are schlepping to the Twin Cities to share this experience with me. So I will be sharing this with family and friends for the first three weeks of the run. And But what I'm really there doing, Bexy, is I'm there learning. I'm, I'm sitting in the back where nobody can see me, and I'm watching the play over and over again, but I'm mostly watching it with the audience. And the audience teaches me a great deal. But you have to kind of see repeated performances to really know, because every audience is different. Yeah, yeah. I'm sure you have the, I mean, this happens for everything. You know, you watch Jimmy Fallon, and it's like one night you get them, they're all laughing. The next night, eh, they're not laughing so much, you know. That's interesting. But I agree with you. I like to sit in the back, too, just to even watch people that are watching these things. I love to, I do, I have the back seat. I have one of the back seats, because I like to be back there and watch, see people's expressions. Maybe I need yeah. to write a play so I can watch people. Oh, God. Yeah, well, there's, yeah. Two, there's two things going on. There's the, yeah. there's the actual entertainment and then there's the entertainment of us watching human beings react yeah. interesting you interesting know. cool so. um okay thank you so much for being on this show with me today i so appreciate it so enjoyed talking to her i just think i got myself a new best friend so make sure you get tickets to this play again it is at mnjewishtheater.org uh the play is we are the levinson's written by Wendy Kaut. Uh, make sure you check out Not So Kosher all over the social media world and listen to all our shows and make sure you check out Rachel Corman's wonderful show of Inside the Artist. She has an amazing interview coming out this week uh, with Pink and Gwen Stefani's bass guitar player who is um, this young, hot, on-point chick so, and of course, Rachel Corman is on point as well all the time. Um, and I thank her for having her show on our network. Um, so be well, my Juniverse. Universe.